The Western region, the Opposition National Democratic Congress, is worried at the breakdown of the BVR machine for the piloting of the voters' registration exercise. The party insists the exercise is ill-conceived and has the tendency to erode the country's democratic credentials. The NPP, on the other hand, disagrees. We have about five months to elections. And so if you pilot a system and the system throws up challenges, you must have time to deal with those challenges. As we speak, we do not know the magnitude of the problem that has been encountered today and how long it will take to resolve it. How widespread, how many of such machines have this problem that you know, has been encountered today? And so if you do not have the time to resolve all those challenges before they are deployed, what happens to the credibility of the exercise you want to undertake? But the new patriotic party thinks otherwise. According to them, what has happened is solvable. We believe that the idea of compiling a new register is in the right direction. And whatever it takes, whatever contribution that we have to make to have a successful exercise, we, we will give the input to the EC. But don't you think that this plays into the general um, concern that the timing is wrong and that the EC should not go ahead with this exercise? I believe there's nothing wrong with the timing. We are in June. Yes, we have six months to election. Yes, it's within time that per their timetable they should be able and they are able, capable. We know they've done it before. So we should give them the support. We have to cooperate. So we've been here for the past three hours and in that period uh, we've counted about 20 people who had come and had wanted to take part in the process but because the exercise has been suspended all of them have gone back to wherever they came from. I got here roughly 1.30 and I was told the machine is faulty and so um, I guess I won't be able to do the um, registration then. Are you disappointed? Well, I'm disappointed too, but I guess the EC has a lot of work to do too. Because this is just a way of in telling us that on the day of the election we will have to face even more problems. If this is the regional office, I can imagine what will happen at the various district levels. Still on the Electoral Commission, this time in the Ashanti region, the Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Benjamin Banobio, says the pilot voters registration exercise recorded hitches because the BVR kit had been set in demonstration mode. He was reacting to concerns raised by some party representatives at the registration centre. Here is a report by William Evansin Kuhn. Wednesday's exercise delayed for close to two hours because the BVR machine was not responding. At 11.30 a.m. the machine became functional but stopped working at 11.30 a.m. This time around it delayed for 10 minutes. It came back again for the exercise to continue. Benjamin Banobio, the Ashanti Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, explained the hitches. As at now, this is a pilot program that we are doing. And we are not using live mode. We are using demo mode to conduct this pilot registration exercise. When we are using the demo mode, it will not permit you to start registration before 8 a.m. If it were to be a live registration, it will allow us to use it from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The EC has refuted claims of using an old BVR. The machine you can see is a new kit, biometric registration kit. This is a new one and it is different from the old one that we were using. I think you can see it, you can let your, your viewers see the way it is. This is a kit that has all the components. And we still remain your election command center. We're going to be hearing this particular sound a lot more as we go on into the December polls. But June 3, 
definitely rings a bell. It's been five years since the twin fire and flood disaster occurred here in Accra. For many victims, their scars are a constant reminder of the grim experience. But as Evelyn Tengma reports, the very things that contributed to the cause of the disaster continue to take place with careless abandon. It's a rainy day in Accra and we are here at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle to be specific or Dona. Now, let me refresh your minds a little. On the 3rd of June, five years ago, a rain like this started during the day and by evening time, there was a twin disaster, flood and fire, which claims the lives of several people and got many injured. Now, it's been five years and we're asking, what has really changed? Now, because if you look at this adult drain, at that time, it contributed significantly to the disaster. You can see the drain is almost filled to capacity. If such a rain should start again, we are in the rainy season, what is going to happen? It was labeled the Black Wednesday. Uh, I one hundred and fifty-four people died, and hundreds suffered severe burns, resulting in permanent physical disabilities. Reports of the ministerial committee that investigated the disaster at the time attributed the floods to choked gutters, which blocked the drainage system, improper planning of settlements, and a few other human factors. The cause of the fire was also attributed to the floods and poor safety practices at fuel stations. But till date, no one has been held accountable for the incident and the story in the area remains the same. Gutters continue to be choked, blocking the free flow of rainwater. The lower parts of the Odo River, known as Sodom and Gomorrah, continues to be blocked by settlers who had reclaimed substantial portions of the Odo Channel. Chief executive of the oil marketing companies, managers of the fuel stations, said the June 3 disaster had awoken their thinking in ensuring improved safety as they randomly check up on best practices in the 4,000 fuel stations across the country. We have a safety week, which this year was the only one we haven't had it because of the cold. They also beef up our training for our people. Now we even complement MPA with our own association auditors. We believe in the state to have investigated, but right now, any incident involving our stuff, we go ahead and investigate. He lamented till date, the OMCs have no copy of the committee's report. The main stakeholders, you need to let them know. All that we hear bits and pieces in the papers. As we go forward, for us, advice to the state is that they said they do any investigation like that, Identify the stakeholders, involve them in the investigation, and when you finish your report, you let them know as well. Engineer Nate Okanse of the Ghana Institution of Engineers is worried governments have no long-term plan for the rains in Ghana. The basic problem is the lack of planning, where we don't have uh, uh, site plans, where we develop our planning to meet such things as the contours and, and other geographic features that are on the land. Urbanization of Accra has improved, increased by 70%. That is concrete areas of Accra. And in less than five years, if you continue at the rate we are going, the whole of the catchment of Odor will be filled up with buildings. So we need to put in these measures through policies that will help. The rains have set in, but Accra drains remain either choked or too small to allow for free flow of water. For many, it appears government authorities only paid lip service as conditions that could result in another disaster looms. Evelyn Tengma, TV3 News, Accra. We continue to pray for all the victims of the twin disaster and also pray for all the lives that were lost. Now, relatives of victims of the June 3 fire and flood disaster are still reeling from the loss of their loved ones five years after the disaster. Emmanuel Gadri in this report tells the story of how a widow and her six children are still struggling to survive. 
Felicia Bass life came to a standstill when the June 3 fire and flood disaster struck. Her husband of 16 years, a taxi driver, was involved in the disaster and died, leaving her with six children. She was also involved in a car accident. <laughs> My husband promised to come home on the day of the disaster. After it rained heavily, I didn't hear of him. We went in search of him only to find his body in a gutter. <laughs> Life for the widow and her six children is now unbearable as they are struggling to survive. Gifty and her six children were sacked from her former abode because she couldn't pay rent. She currently resides at Teshi in a single room with her family. <laughs> Since then, our lives have been unbearable. We've been struggling to survive. When I first saw her, I was touched after hearing her story. Please come to the aid of the family. She now lives on the benevolence of friends and a pastor. Five years after the twin disaster, Gifty says the compensation given to victims was taken by her husband's relatives. She wants the public to come to her aid to enable her cater for her family. When I come home, we find it difficult to eat and also food that how, how we can um, live better at home too is a problem. So. Suffering here. My brother here is Prosper Opon and he is also in JHS too. But sometimes, not all the days that he go to school because sometimes he doesn't get even the um, classes fee to go to school. So please, we need help. It's just a sad one there, but it's been five years. Every year we keep having rains. It's become a perennial affair. We can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. It's just simple as that. And that's why we're highlighting these factors that lead to flooding in this country to be addressed. But reopening of schools for final year students as SHS and GHS students from June 22, 2020 by government has been met with mixed reactions, even though the move according to government was part of measures fighting the coronavirus pandemic. Others think otherwise and want much more consultation on the issue. The move according to government is to allow for students to prepare and also write their final exams. As part of measures to ensure safety of students while in school, the Education Ministry came out with measures. Parents would not be allowed to visit their wards while in school, a move most parents are not happy with. A parent, Stephen Auntie, says they need to be secured in their minds that their children would be safe in school. Some of us have children who have health issues and have uh, special needs, dietary requirements, they're allergic to certain food items and continuously would like to be able to visit when the school visiting window opens. There are also concerns we have about uh, whether the staff in these schools will be tested, whether the children who are coming from all backgrounds will be tested for COVID-19. We don't seem to be getting that kind of assurances from the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Health Service. The National Council of the Parent Teachers Association have also kicked against the situation where students would not be allowed to use phones in school. Its president, Alexander Yaudansu, says the only way students can communicate with their parents and guardians is to be provided with phones. I think they have to take a second look at the, at the issue because uh, if they are not 
allowing parents to visit their ward physically. Why don't they allow them to, you know, call them by phone? So, uh, for a parent to sit down for three months, two weeks, not that the child is away from the country, inside the country, considering the pandemic, and they said, no, that wouldn't be comfortable. A clinical psychologist, Dr. Isaac Newman, said due to uncertainties about the virus, stress could set in for students. Every student going back to school in this season may have some anxiety and stress relating to reorganizing themselves and their lives in this season to, to go to school and also stay on campus. So anxieties and stresses with reorganization can be a problem. Then also anxieties relating to whether they will get the infection or not and stresses relating to all the protocols they have to follow in order to prevent the spread of the infection on campus can be very, very challenging for students. He said school counselors should be made available to support students. They should make arrangements to help students who have issues with finances, with parents here and there, so that they can help the student out of it. And I know every school has a school counselor. Counselors would have to be there to provide some psychological services, even for, for these students. As students prepare to go back to school, one thing is clear. The need to be cautious and observe all protocols. A deputy Education Minister in charge of Basic and Tertiary indicated earlier on uh, the 3FM that there's some engagement going on at the Ghana Education Service to consider whether or not students should be giving mobile phones uh, going uh, back to school. We'll be exploring that as we go on a subsequent bulletin. But this is the latest case count. Their recoveries have increased now, gone past the 3,000 mark. That's 3,132. That's the new uh, recovery rate uh, of COVID-19 uh, in this country. The case count has also increased to 8,548 and uh, the death case still remains 38. Now, if you subtract all of this, that's the death, uh, the, the, the issues with the recoveries and the confirmed cases, then you get the active cases, which is 5,378. That's when you take out the recoveries and the death cases we have. From the total case count, you get this 5,378. For the regional breakdown, the Greater Accra region actually st still stands at 5,894. That's the same case count uh, as at yesterday. The increases were experienced in parts of the Ashanti and the Eastern region. That's 1,342. Western region, 449. Central region, 438. Eastern region, 134. Volta region, 86. Western North region, 68. The Upper East region, 42. And also you have Northern region, 37. OT region, 26. The Upper West region, 22. Bono East region, 6. You have also North East region, 2. Savannah, 1. And Bono, 1 as well and the Hafo region uh, is what you see right there. So I've not recorded any case as yet, but there are some 130 samples that have been taking results still uh, being awaited. That's at the Bono region. So we have eyes on that. We'll be updating you as we go on. Aisha. And now the Controller General of Immigration, Kwame Suatechi, is advocating for inclusion of COVID-19 testing in International Certificate of Vaccination, otherwise known as Yellow Card, to strengthen health security. This, the service says, would help prevent, protect and contain the spread of the coronavirus disease across borders and avoid the interference with international traffic and trade. And now he, however, advised that health clearance for COVID-19 and other infectious diseases must be strictly enforced as part of requirement for entry into member states when implemented. You are live on News 360. We are live on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. Stay with us. Business is up next. All right, you're still watching News 360. Good evening to you. Thanks for staying with us. Time for business with me, Nana Ikria Mensa Brampa. We're getting some updates from the post tonight regarding the integrated customs management system. Well, managers of ICOM say work is in progress to solve emerging challenges associated with the deployment at the Tema port. However, users of the system 
freight forwarders claim not much has been done to bring relief within the last two days. Josephine and JJ was at the port and comes to with this report. Implementation of the Integrated Custom Management System, ICUMS, entered its third day. The number of forwarders who had thrown the long room have reduced, but most of them are still unhappy about accumulated charges to pay. I've paid duty on eight containers. I was supposed to clear them by the Monday. As at now, I don't even know where to go to. I went to the shipping line. They have no idea how to even go about things for me. I came to customs, talked to commissioner that this is the kind of problem I'm facing. And he said, yes, today they are going to fix the problem for us. But as at now, there's no way out. My dear old CCVR, care to two cars. My person is sending me to your duty. My dear, duty about 11,000. 600 BB. But me send it, you know, due to not see about 6,500. I want to correct it and pay. Over, there's no overage penalty. Since Monday, I have gone round, 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 round. They should correct it so that I can pay. If I pay this one, I have cheated the government. Is it fair? I'm frustrated. We can't sleep. Right now, I'm even having another document, which I'm supposed to do amendment. I'm just coming from the manifest section. As we speak now, currently, no clearing is going on. And my people, including the importers who are struggling of their demorage, are so aggressive. So from today, as the minister said, that he's giving us three days, we are still waiting for the minister's response. And then tomorrow, if nothing is, supposed to, nothing is done with it, we are going to embark on a serious demonstration, not against the policy. We got it. The old system had about 53 MMDAs, including the FDA, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Energy Commission, OMCs, the Ministry of Finance, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, shipping lines, and the Meridian Ports and Services as part of the clearing chain. All these institutions have all been affected as spread forwarders struggle to get access managers of the system have delegated a number of rapid response team to all sectors for users to seek assistance we've also stationed men at the long room at the various terminals go to mps terminal go to golden jubilee um go to the transit uh, area all these areas have men that we have put there to help solve the issues look challenges will come in any process be it new ones or even old ones the point is how do you respond to them as quick as they can exporting of goods we gather were also working partially Right, so we'll see how the managers would work out the challenges uh, in coming days and give you more updates from the ports. But away from the ports, now some players in the financial sector are projecting the level of savings to drop further because individual incomes have dropped due to numerous job losses recorded owing to the coronavirus pandemic. They, however, remain optimistic the central bank has put in place strong supervision to ensure individual savings are secured despite the drop in income levels. More in the following report. Following the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, most economies across the globe have witnessed a drop in the savings and investment portfolios due to loss of incomes. For instance, the Chinese retail savings and investment market is forecast to grow by just 3.3% in 2020, its worst performance since the global financial crisis. Layoffs and job losses induced by partial lockdowns and COVID-related restrictions since mid-March 2020 raises the prospects of a further slowdown in consumer spending. Analysis of the monetary indicators by the Bank of Ghana showed a slowdown in the growth of monetary aggregates. A quick look on the Bank of Ghana website looking at the monetary indicators shows that there's a slowdown in terms of savings when you look at uh, December 2019 to the first quarter of 2020 and this is quite evident. Looking at the figures from 16.1% to 12.7% at the end of the first quarter of 2020, we are here in circle to find out from these market women in the face of COVID-19 how their profit margins are looking like 
are they making income and are they saving anything at all? It's much like a kaka kra. Because I yet but to be any day. Despite the pandemic, business is not that bad. At least I am able to save a little. While some traders are making some income, others are juggling on what to sell to make ends meet. I have changed my trade due to the pandemic, but I'm still not making any profit. Director of Business Operations at Daylex Finance, Joe Jackson, says the trend in decline in income is likely to continue in the face of COVID-19. People, whole sectors of the economy are being wiped out, from hospitality to entertainment to education. So obviously incomes have dropped, and when incomes drop, savings will also drop because it is when you have an income that you start to save Ghana can a businessman eugene sriboajiman has emerged the third jackpot uh, winner of the 21st prize winner for the 787 week 22 he won 105000 cities Eugene Sribo Ajiman won two out of the five tickets he purchased. He was grateful for the cash, adding he will use the money to complete his building project. I was there when I got a text message on my phone. Um, when I saw it at first, I said, wow, what is this? Is it a kind of fraud something? I said, no, let me give it a try and see. But honestly, I went through the internet to Google and find out if it's really true. Head of customer experience, Richard Akoto Banfo said, helping customers to create wealth and satisfaction is the goal of the 787 lottery. We are celebrating our third jackpot winner, who is bagging home 105,000 Ghana cities. Packed with all of these draw, on Tuesday we hold a special draw where 25 people, let me say players, win 200 Ghana cities each with a purchase ticket of at least one. On Thursday, with a purchase of three tickets, we have three players taking home 1,000 Ghana cities each and our special Saturday regular draw, which of course, you get to win other amazing prizes, either 10 Ghana cities, 25 Ghana cities, 200 Ghana cities, or 1,000 Ghana cities, and amazingly, the unique prize, 20,000 Ghana cities. Lucky enough, if your jackpot letter reflects or corresponds with your lot number if you are picked for the unique prize, you are taking home 70,000 Ghana cities this Saturday. 787 is mobile lottery platform that offers customers the opportunity to participate in a lottery game in the comfort of their homes. Aside the Saturday regular draw, there is a special Tuesday draw where 25 players pocket 200 cities as well as the special Thursday draw where 3 players are rewarded 1,000 each. All tickets purchased for the special Tuesday and Thursday draws automatically qualify for the regular jackpot draw on Saturday. One can dial star 787 hash to participate in the subsequent draws. A ticket is sold for five Ghana cities. All right, let's still end on issues of money because the Ghana city remained stable against the dollar but uh, depreciated against uh, the euro and the pound there on the interbank markets. Quickly, let's look at the performance there in terms of uh, that no change the difference. Five Ghana cities, 61 pesos is what you will buy it at on the interbank market. It will be sold to you at five Ghana cities, 62 pesos. For the city to the pound, it has been bought at seven Ghana cities, uh, 0, 05 pesos and sold to you at seven Ghana cities, uh, 06 pesos and for the city to the euro also at six Ghana cities 28 pesos that is how you will buy it and it will be sold to you also in the on the interbank market mind you these figures are a bit higher when you visit the forex market you can log on to 3news.com for more on business my name is Nanikia Mensah Bampa Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, the sports minister, Isaac Asiyama, says restarting the Ghana Premier League will come with serious financial considerations. Speaking on the matter today, he reiterated that the cost centres for the reorganisation are huge and may have to be given realistic consideration.
Admitting how tough it is to restart domestic football, he says all options available to officials have been explored, but the expenditure involved. The figure that came out from the NAC was about 3,000 a, a match. It's not going to pay much. And this is for me, it's not only about the money, it's about the lives of our athletes, of our footballers. How do we ensure that they are safe at all these league centers? So it's an issue we are seeing resolving it. But I can assure you that it's phase one of ease of restrictions. So as we monitor the situation, or the situation, first it may be the way that training of footballers and how to put in measures to protect their lives. Various modes of support, he however says, are being sought and considered for the various federations. There is an ongoing project between the why we over the years have been supporting young people. Understand, engaging young people, giving them some allowances. So that is the package very soon we go out to support our athletes in general. So that they be questioned because they are the hardest hit. Our athletes, I mean footballers, <laughs> runners and all of them. So they are the hardest hit. So how do we find some support for them so that they can survive and of course enjoy the games that they are involved in. And very soon that package will come on board. Ghana joins other countries facing uncertainty over when it will fully have sports back in its entirety. With gradual face in place for resumption, hope may be near for many who wish to have their careers back on track. Still staying on this, and he says the state has no intention to not pay the old salaries of former Black Stars coach Kwesi Apia. And I speaking on this, he was hopeful that given the unique relationship both parties enjoyed, it will be strange to suggest he wouldn't be paid what is due him. This is to the gentleman, and we have been uncared. Not at all. No. We've shown care, concern to the gentleman. We've given that respect as a Ghanaian. That respect. When I became minister, Abraham Grant, we owed him at that time. Gradually, we resolved it and paid him off. So I can assure the generation that gradually we shall take his year here, all his entitlements. I can assure you. We love him as a Ghanaian. He's one of our own. We can never do anything against his year here. He's done a lot of from other Ghana. We respect him. We call him Mayele. We respect that gentleman. He's a gentleman. So we all respect him. In a related development, President of the Ghana Football Association, Keto Kreku, says the Football Association is going through um, financial turmoil of its own, outlining the challenges it is facing and dealing with keeping a balance in this COVID-19 era. He says the FA is working hard to restore the gains made prior to the pandemic. Speaking to the media after a press briefing today, he underscored the importance of understanding the crisis the football world is going through. Obviously, it all comes down to money because if you want to embark on an elaborate educational campaign, it's money. Uh, clubs will have to play or may have to play behind closed doors. Uh, it means money will be lost. Um, the National Sports Authority will have to prepare the facilities for us because some of the clubs use their facilities. Money plays a, a big part. Uh, that's the gospel truth. Um, the sports economy or the football economy is very small. It's not very, very robust. And, and therefore, it's a challenging period where we have to really, really think outside the box, be very fair in our thinking process and ensure that the best decision is taken for, for Ghana. Stakeholders continue to puzzle over whether to cancel or continue the league. Ket says it will be imperative to wait for June 30, which is the stipulated time for the FA to come clear on the issue. Football Association of Ghana has heavily relied on the FIFA support and the CAF support, which clearly is in, inadequate. Okay, So we need to find ways to develop our products in a way that will attract the interest of corporate Ghana so we can have excess funding to, to, to effectively and sufficiently take care of our, our football clubs and our stakeholders. There is no visible hope of the Ghana Premier League returning soon after recent restrictions on contact sports. For most shareholders, the more the restrictions have their way, the more cost they have to bear. 
So to cancel or not the Ghana Premier League, the General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association will join me later tonight at 9.30 p.m. on GPL Express. So that's your sports here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewon. Good evening. Acclaimed comedian Funny Face, a.k.a. Children's President, has been sharing his future plans for kids who form a chunk of his following. Speaking on 3FM, the versatile comedian had disclosed plans to build a kids' playground called The Funny World to help kids develop social and creative thinking skills. Do some. Mm. I know that uh, you, you keep talking about plans, plans for, for the next... Yes, because I want to do a children's park. Tell me park. about it. I want to build, build, build children's park. You want park. to build a children's park. Called Funny World. Funny World. For kids. Wow. Yeah. You like your dream, huh? I do. Yeah. I'm proud I mean, of you. I, you. I saw it in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a big dream, eh? You, 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 you know Disneyland? This. Yeah, I do. Yes, that's my dream. But you, you can't hold a move. So is have it? you done estimates? You yes, have, yes. I have, 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 have the land. You have the land? I have 32 plots. At where? What do you have Wow. to start it so if you're an investor and you are listening one or three of them help me let me help you uh you want to help me mm -hmm. call three of money show that that boy that, that jimmy boy i want to help him the 32 plots yes at you are you know i like i like big stuff yes i see that that, that if you have a huge house yes to go with the glory <laughs> i like big stuff you understand you know, i know the other big things <laughs> <laughs> So, a 32 plots yeah. for a playground. Yes, yes, yes. For to go, children. To go with the glory. You know, some time ago, we, we had a discussion on this show yeah. that a lot of the playgrounds now, the public... There's none. The government playgrounds... There's have none. Been converted. Look at... If I said, like, My brother, you, you, see, let me tell you a secret. Is in some other country... Let me tell you this. In some other country, trust me, a critical eye would have been given to Funny Face. Trust me. Somebody who talks and children go gaga. Somebody who talks and children listen for years. The children's president. It is a meme. Kaswa Van Dam. Funny face there in a chat with our very own well, Alfred Kansi. <laughs> well, he yeah. has dreams and uh, mm. I think legitimate ones is that. I think it's, it's a big one. Um, if it comes to pass, children will be happy. Playgrounds Funny are world. important. Yeah. Funny world. Mm. I can't wait to see it actually come to me fusion. Too. Me too. I can't Great wait stuff to see there. That. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you as always for staying with us here on News 360. I am Alfred Akansi. My name is Aisha Yakubu. Have a good evening.